yo what's up guys welcome back to my youtube channel um, i'm back with another video and actually it's a video that is separate from what i'll be talking about i'm just giving you some background story to the video itself so a few weeks ago last week i think um me and a friend of mine mujalifa shout out to you man he owns a business and he's within the space of online and marketing for other businesses so it's like an online store he runs and he sells products for other businesses on his platform so much i had this client this wonderful lady precious miss precious um very sweet lady she she's a founder of afro pride afro pride is a hair product and specifically for African hair or let's say Afro hair, hence Afro Pride. And she used to run a salon which closed down in um, COVID. During COVID, she unfortunately had to shut down her operations. Um, Afro, I think it's Africa Kingdom or Afro Kingdom. I'll just put the proper name um, somewhere here. So yeah, she wanted or Mojalifa was gonna help her like be able to sell her items on a much um, more visible platform like on like, e-commerce basically. Yeah, Mojalifa is within the tech space, specifically e-commerce. So this is just a video we, we went to her, the, the place she operates in. So she has a makeshift salon where she still um treats some of her clients um so yeah it was just us going there to take content of her product and ask questions and i ended up making videos um additionally we took pictures of her products um i don't think i can show you now but you'll definitely see the pictures on her online um website as well as um Mujalifa's website I'll also attach the link in the description of the video so guys in general this is just the information session video um, where we actually talk about the topic of afro hair and she is quite insightful and I have to say very qualified in that regard so please watch please engage please share to all um, cosmetic or hairdressers or salon owners that you may know it's very um educational she's very like i said qualified in the space of hair and all the science behind that yeah just watch the video you'll see what i'm talking about so yeah let's get into the video thank you Training them on how to display products was what I had to do. So when you started the salon, mm -hmm. the did you have Afro Pride there? No, I started, you know, my, my research started 26 years ago, actually, um, for natural hair. Okay. And then I ended up going to college to learn more about hair, but then when I realized that college doesn't have education on natural afro, yes. I then thought, you know what, I'll open my own hair salon and train people based on the knowledge. Yes, the college helped me with the theory and how hair works generally. And then um, when I got into the industry, I realized there are no products for Afro. Yeah. So, like I said, I opened in 2008, and then 2016, that's when I launched the product. So it was eight years after I was operating. Because I wanted products that were made for Afro. And then how did you come up with the name? 
Oh, actually, I had so many different names. I think I wrote 12 names. And then I send these names to different people, people that I knew in the industry, my sisters, friends, all over. And then I said to them, they must choose three names and send them back to me out of the list. Okay. So they chose that three names and I've replied with one of the names from everybody. Yeah. So oh, okay. <laughs> I just decided to use Afropry. And it's been um, used ever since. Hey? And it's been used ever since. Yeah, since 2016, since I launched it in 2016. And I am the first customer. <laughs> when it comes to this product, I use it on me first. So you you know you know it you know it best. Yes. I mean the packaging, everything. I I had to come up with, and you know for it to be this color, black and white, I insisted because oh. I saw so many products on that before for African hair, especially relaxed hair. You know all different textures, but mostly African. There were all these yellow, green, blue, like pest control stuff. Yeah. I'm like, can we have a clean thing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I neutral. So that's why I decided to to make it black and white, <laughs> trying to keep it clean. For me too, that I have to spend on this. And then at the same time, I must have 5,000 rands every month. Not, like, how did four, I do four, that? Four, 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 for them. Yeah, but I mean, which then, that's what didn't work for me. So, that's that understandable, because also marketing is a long-term game. You don't, you don't just gain immediately. You know. So they have to price it according to certain markets. Like, if someone says, okay, we're going to monitor your sales, we will... If we make so much, we're taking so much. If we make less, we take... I'm happy with that. Like, can we all work towards growth? Yeah. It can't be one-sided. So like your target, you know your target market perfectly. Very well. That, that would be helpful also when we're running ads on our own. At least we know who to target to instead of just oh, because I have two pages on social media. Like yesterday, a girl that used to be at high school with my kids showed up at the gate yesterday with no appointment. And so I got a shock at footage. I double booked myself by mistake. So when I saw the child, I'm like, gay, I haven't seen you for ages. She's like, Auntie, I was waiting outside the gate. And my phone is on silent while I'm with the client, so I don't respond. And then she says, no, I wanted to do my hair now because I'm leaving um, on Saturday to, for Joburg. I'm like, but you can't, you only work, I mean, I only work by appointment. So I can't see you now because I have a client now and I was working another one out and the other one was already waiting. So she says, no, but you have two pages on Instagram. You have African Eye Kingdom, my salon used to be called African Eye Kingdom. Oh, yeah. But now I knew that African Kingdom, you can just walk in anytime because that was the salon that was oh, full of people. Yeah, full of people. So she says, you need to delete that page. I'm like, you know, there's two people following that page, so I don't know what to do. Should I delete? But then I'll lose all that following. <laughs> and so I don't know how to do it. Maybe you guys also can check and see. Oh, you, you can't change the name. <sighs> Because I've already created Afro Pride as the product, as the oh, brand. Yeah. So now there's Afro Pride, there's African Kingdom, which African Kingdom, the salon itself, is what it was before COVID. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I started this back 2008. So that African Hair Kingdom salon is a salon that was operating since 2008 until COVID. Until COVID. But there's followers there, and people still find me online through that, you oh, know. Yeah. And so I don't know. I'll, I'll check it out. It's African Hair Kingdom. It's on Instagram. So you have a page for the Afro Pride product. as well, okay. which is not. 
it's the not best a, one can get. I mean, it's my thing. So. Is the um, are you do you have access to both um the pages? Yeah, yeah, I can access both. And then um, I'm gonna need you to describe also the the like target market in terms of who are you targeting for your products or mostly salons. Okay, mostly it's the salons before anything. Or the salon. But generally, every African child deserves to know what to do with their natural hair. I'm a mother with a child. I need to know what to do with my child's hair as soon as they're born. So when I, like the way I work now, the one-on-ones that I'm doing, I explain everything to the client, why I'm doing this, how they should do it at home. So the client doesn't necessarily need to keep coming to me. They will know, the whole family would learn from that. So. So I would say um, mothers. Um, I always say Afro families because when I say mothers, it's like the dad doesn't have Afro. I mean, I've yeah. got guy clients. Oh, yeah. I've got a 13 year old boy that's going to use Afro. I've got 25 year olds that have big Afro. So I don't want it to make it a feminine thing. We're all born with Afro hair, so it's yeah. got no gender. And because I've got clients that will just decide to buy the bigger, like a, maybe a one litre size of a product because they want it to be used by the whole family at home. So if you go into the bathroom, you go to shower, you're not going to say, oh, this shampoo is for mom or my sister. It's for the family if they all have a problem. <laughs> you know? But when it comes to salon, mostly it's the education that I know it was never there when it comes to Afro hair. Because when I went to college, they educated us about relaxed or chemically processed hair, not about our natural hair. So all salons, whatever they're doing in most cases, is based on the education that we're given at college, which was for chemical processed hair. So also I think what you could leverage also is the education for I, I really good. want that. Be time. Good. Good. I won't lie. So I'm thinking, what, mm -hmm. what do you think um, in terms of like sort of a mini you see those mini YouTube videos? Like a and like an, vibes. An, an ad. Yeah, sort of. Like an, an informative yeah, about short it. one. Yeah, short video about African hair. Yeah, and then also maybe we take a few pictures and then maybe I'll, I'll compile that. And I'll say they edit something. So that's what I'm thinking. Because now I'm afraid to use hair food after that day. Oh, yeah. so you picked up something for Yeah, shorts. like I have yeah. hair food, it's sitting, now. I'm no longer using it. But it makes sense, ne? Yeah, because I'm thinking now, it's the same as Vaseline. Yes. And also, now when I use, I use dye sometimes when I mm -hmm. cut my hair. So they put that Vaseline for the dye not to get on my skin. Thank you. Which makes sense, because yeah. it must block your pores yeah. from absorbing it. And also the difference, I always say, like, I, I will always have Vaseline, I mean, we will grow up with Vaseline. Mm. And I still have Vaseline in it, yeah. Vaseline helps in that it blocks your pores. So everybody's skin produces oil, which is the natural moisture we have. But that oil can leave your skin and your skin gets dry. So Vaseline helps to block that, oh, your natural yeah, oil yeah. from escaping. So your skin remains smooth, Moist. it traps in your natural moisture. But now the biggest difference is that you can use Vaseline four times on your lips. You're going to wash that face. You can use it on your body. You're going to wash that body. When you use hair food, Vaseline on your scalp, how often do you wash? 
because it's okay to use that petroleum to block temporarily and you're going to wash we wash our body even three times a day sometimes mm. so that vaseline is gone but the one that goes to our scalp i mean people just base their scalp every day and they don't wash especially when they have braids or whatever styles they have they keep that hairstyle but all they do is base with hair food mm. and when your scalp is itching they're like oh because you don't base your scalp yeah that's that's, base what your they scalp. Told me. that's why it's itching so by basing your scalp, they like block your pores so your scalp can stop breathing and telling you wash me or do something so it stops communicating by you blocking it. So like, what causes your hair to 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 be itchy? For example, me, because I don't use um, hair food anymore. Yes. So when I bath, obviously I'm a boy, I just put the water on my hair. Yes, yes. And then let's say after maybe an hour, it mm -hmm. becomes so dry and then if I'm exposed to the sun I start getting itchy or something. It's the dryness. You see your scalp reacts to that. Remember even the water we use that runs out of the tap. Mm -hmm. It has lime scale, some form of chemical. So it will dry your skin. And uh, for example I had a client that I told her to keep moisturizing her hair because she needed to grow her hair. So when I ask her, when last did you moisturize, she's like, oh, it's just precious long time. I'm like, why? She says, but I work from home now. So I'm like, so when you work from home, you don't moisturize your face, your legs, your arms, because your scalp is the same. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you wash your scalp every day, you're stripping the natural moisture from your scalp every day, but you're not doing anything to replenish. Yes, to yeah. Because at some point we do put something on our face mm -hmm. just to protect it, but the scalp is still the skin. Yes, mm -hmm. it's under our hair, but it's still, still part skin. of the skin. And also because the scalp, everybody's scalp has yeast naturally. So those that will avoid to wash their scalp even when it's dirty, then I don't know what can ferment it because <laughs> sweat is the everything that goes in. <laughs> so, but sometimes the scalp will itch because of dryness and um, sometimes the scalp will itch because of dandruff, which are two different things. So people will confuse dandruff and dry scalp and think it's the same thing. When your scalp is dry, it will itch and up to a point where you will see small powder flakes like white, yeah, yeah, white. Powder, like small small so, ones call it scruffer i think that's dry scalp but then when you have dandruff it's because you have too much happening on your scalp maybe it's the residue from the products you're using it's a lot of oil some people have oilier skin than others sometimes it's the hair food that you were using it's not washed so your scalp start to react but then the dandruff flakes are thicker and they are fetish like the, you will touch and feel oil mm -hmm. but dry scalp is dry scalp and it's flaky small white powdery flakes and um so sometimes what people do wrong they see the dry scalp flakes and they go to a store and they buy anti-dandruff shampoo anti-dandruff this meanwhile the anti-dandruff is meant for those fatty flakes and it's going to strip off even more. Meanwhile, you had dry scalp, so you're making the problem worse. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much people don't know. Yeah, we don't know, man. To be honest, we don't know. Yeah. I'm so just going to do this for yeah, a few more minutes, and I'll cover her with the thermal bonnet, which the reason for that, so the cap that I'm going to use, or the bonnet that I'm going to use, it releases heat or warmth gradually oh. over the head. So what that does, because when your body temperature rises, you, you your pores open up to sweat. So what I'm trying to do is to mimic that process of sweating, so the pores can open and quickly absorb yeah, this treatment. Yeah, okay. And then after 20 minutes, I'll wash it off. What does it do to the Does it make it softer? It, it feeds moisture because remember our hair naturally, well, Afro hair, is the most fragile and the driest mm -hmm. from all the strands. 
So we need to feed moisture to our hair as much as we can because that's what it's lacking. And it's the moisture that causes the elasticity that our afro shrinks. So when a person goes and blow dries their hair straight, they remove all the moisture that's supposed to be there. So there's no longer any elasticity. So that hair breaks so easily. Oh. So for your hair not to break, you have to keep adding moisture to it so there's always elasticity. And like I always say, our hair behaves like spaghetti. You know, before you cook spaghetti, it's dry and stretched. Mm -hmm. And you can break it so fast. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you put it in water and it starts absorbing, it's wiggling, you can chase it with a fork, it doesn't break. Our hair behaves the same. So all we need to do is put moisture. So what this treatment does, it puts the, moist, the moisture deeper into the strand. Unlike when you moisturize on a daily basis, you spray your hair. Half of it could evaporate because the wind is blowing or the sun is burning. But this one at least traps it inside. So your strands become stronger so they don't break easily. And this is not the moisture one, this is not the treatment one would use if they had relaxed their hair with like straighten it maybe with chemicals. Because when you straighten your hair with chemicals, your hair doesn't have the ability to absorb anymore because it's stretched. Meanwhile, we need that elasticity. So you have to do a different treatment, which is a protein feeding treatment. Our hair is made out of protein naturally called keratin. So when the hair is natural, it has that protein, obviously. But when it's chemically processed, the chemicals, they break down that protein. So it doesn't absorb because those are the building blocks. So when you, you, you chemically process your hair, you need to feed protein as a treatment, not moisture. But now I'm feeding moisture to balance off the protein. So let's say for me, a boy, mm -hmm. For, because I know in my family, my father has like the hair doesn't grow anymore. So is it possible is to prevent? Bald? Yeah. Okay. Is it possible for me? So because I know if he's bald, I have a likelier chance for me also to be bald. Genetically, I can't change these things, but one can delay the process. So if the genes in you have that. So let's say to your father it happened at 30 years old or whatever age, you can delay it and prolong it by doing good for your hair and your scalp so it doesn't get to a point where it gives up. It's like trying to keep your whole body healthy so you don't age like yeah. the previous generation or whatever the case is. So with the hair as well and the, the boldness, I, I can never say, oh yeah, I can help you so you don't have, we can prolong it. How, how, how can you like prolong it? Like you see the things that I do, feeding the scalp, um, explaining to the people don't leave your scalp too dry so it itches. Where it's itching, your, your hair follicles also eventually they die, they stop producing. And also sometimes in women it's how we pull our hair when we plait. So we strain the scalp underneath and then the scalp is, um, it gets too dry and the hair follicles underneath they then stop working because of the tension that is caused. And because these are small little veins that carry nutrients from our bloodstream to our hair, for hair growth to our roots, sometimes they block. Mm -hmm. So it's good to massage the scalp. I do give very good massages at the basin, mm -hmm. which helps with blood flow, releases the tension, and also to wake up if some follicles decided, okay, I'm done, I don't want to work anymore. So the massage releases the tension, helps with blood flow, where there's better blood flow, there's health. So you do those things, you moisturize your scalp, just maybe using good oils. Don't allow it to be too dry. Do not not pay attention yeah. because you're a boy. Yeah. Because eventually, <laughs> we all have the same hair on our heads, you know. Was the basin there the whole time? Huh? Was the basin there the whole time or you, you can move it around? No, I put it oh. um, so I can use it. Actually, I fixed this little place after COVID, after closing the garage where the salon was, yeah. where you went. 
because my aim was to train stylists like one at a time. So it will be me, the stylist, and the model. So I wanted a smaller space. Oh. But then when the clients noticed that I was doing this, they all came back, please can you do our hair? Because as much as I had sent letters to all of them to say, guys, I'm no longer opening the salon. But when they saw, I mean, they came to buy the products and then they saw the base and then they asked for the service. Yeah. So I've been doing hair again since. <laughs> so do you still intend to train people for like... Yes, I've done that. Um, I started training salons just before COVID started, 2020 January. I think I, by the time COVID started, I already trained three salons in Cape Town. Oh. But then COVID started, and then it was the social distance and all the things. You know, it's nice when a comp goes through like this on natural yes. hair. No I was chemical, like... no nothing, and this <laughs> yeah. is all natural hair, you know? That's because it's moist, um, perfectly moist. Yes, and you need to actually feed enough moisture to the hair so it can get to a softer texture so it doesn't snap and break so easily because when it's softer and it's got more elastic, it doesn't break easily. Yeah. And at the same time, you get it to its best and healthiest state and which then means that the hair can start growing better because when it's not healthy, it's not going to grow. You know, it's yeah. going to grow and break at the same time anyway. Okay, so you can come this way. What should I do? So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on my hands. This is the same oil that I use all the time. Oh, like seven in one oil So this is the same oil. Okay. So I'm going to use this oil just to give the head, the scalp, a very good head massage. Like I say, it is best to, to remove all the tension, to release tension on the scalp, to create a bit of blood flow. Um, saturation to unblock all the blocked veins so nutrients can go through to your um, hair roots as well for better growth. And sometimes people, like I was saying, balding people, if you keep doing this and massaging and feeding and you know getting the head what it needs, because remember the brain is there, there's so much tension there. Yeah. And on top of that we plait, we pull with this. So it's good to release the tension at times. Just to keep the whole um, environment healthy. Which is a prime, a salon, rather five minimum order of 4.5, the product. No. So I can train 12 stylists, I can go back for a fresher, you know, course. I can support that salon as much as I can because I send clients to them. Basically. Like if I train a salon in Cape Town, I will send all my clients that come from Greenpoint, Sea Point to them so they won't come here. And, um, but at least I want to know that I'm growing the brand through the salon. Yeah. So I'll train them, I expect them to buy that stuff. So this this goes back to what you said about um, business being one-sided. So at least you you help them. And, and we all should be growing. It seems as if you're helping them more than you I should. That. Yeah, and... But also you also... um. Like would like you then to actually buy your products yes, in return. Yes, yes, which is why I mean the, the reason sometimes I was reluctant on these big retail stores was that there's no education there. So if you walk into a store and you're looking for a shampoo, you're just going to buy the cheapest, and nobody's going to say to you, "Oh, you need a conditioner, also you can't buy the shampoo at all," because the education we have was that it's okay to have a shampoo and not to have a conditioner, yeah. but it's not okay, you know? So I, I, I always wanted to distribute my products 
through education salon. So the more salons I'm going to be exposed to, the more products I'm going to distribute. Um, just a quick question, what you just said. So conditioner and shampoo, mm. can you explain that? The shampoo um, is meant to clean and cleanse and take away all the dirt. But at the same time, the shampoo can strip and dry your hair and scalp. Yeah. And like I said at the beginning, our hair strands are most fragile because they're very dry, which I will explain why um, later. So the conditioner goes back and balances the strands off, you know, again, put a little bit of elasticity of softness so it's not as dry as the, con as the shampoo would need it. Yeah. Because your hair will get extremely dry if you order shampoo, they're not conditioned. So the shampoo is mainly for the scalp and the hair strands as well, but the conditioner is meant for the hair strands. So if someone has very long hair, they don't necessarily need to focus on conditioning the scalp because it's not the scalp that needs it, it's the way that makes the conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, our hair is beautiful and you can see when our hair is wet, you can see the pattern of that coil. Yeah. Meanwhile, when the hair gets dry, you will never see this on dry hair. So when we stretch our hair with relaxers, you don't see the coil pattern, you don't see the beauty of the hair because it's all stretched out. And it would say, ah, oh, but my hair doesn't have curls, but it's because it's dry. So I also have a question of my, of my own. Yes. Because I just recently started doing this to my hair. Oh nice. This is how I finish the hair off when I do. Oh. I twist the hair like that. So my sister does this. Okay. But how often should one wash their hair? Okay. Um, the hair and the scalp, they speak two different languages. The scalp would love if we washed it every day. Like I said, it's part of our skin. And also because it contains, it has um, um, yeast. But because our strands is the coily strands, they the most fragile, they the driest. So we're avoiding drying our hair, not necessarily for the scalp. So to balance it off, they always say it's healthier to wash your, it's healthy to wash your scalp, your hair and scalp once a week, once every seven to 10 days. But then that's not a golden rule for everyone. Yeah. When your scalp itches, it could itch tomorrow and you've washed today. Maybe you were sweating, maybe something, whatever. So you can't say, oh, you are golden rule, wash your hair every seven to ten days. It's just to avoid to wash it daily and to avoid to not to wash your scalp for too long. You know? Yeah. So if you have once every seven to ten days, it's a good thing to know. But then if one pushes it to two weeks, again, they still feel good. But at least that's healthy. When you go beyond this, even if you don't do it, it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs>